and I want to connect it with, with last night. Uh, that mezuzah over there is a mezuzah that comes from this yeshiva. It was a mezuzah that the Rameh Shapiro brought from Kotsk. Uh, that, that's, I think, the original. There's a smaller one at the entrance to the building downstairs, which is uh, uh, a copy. Um, at the beginning of Mesila Isharim, the Ramchal quotes a brighter in Avodah Zara Davkav. Says Torah Meviali Dezehi Rut. He has a path there that, that we have to follow. Uh, it's an essential book, Mesila Isharim, uh, a book I read every day and have done for many, many years and finished many, many times, but still not progressed very far. Uh, relating to what I, I was talking about last night, the need for a person to be looking inwards and checking themselves and directing themselves. Uh, one of the problems, says the Ramchal, is we don't have time, we're too busy. And we're too busy, especially with these phones, right? Every single one of us is all the time, we're on our phones and we're doing WhatsApps and this. We always manage without them, right? We ran the world without these things, but now we can't live without them for a second. Not for a second, everyone's, I'm doing it too, Every, all the time, it drives you crazy. Uh, so we're always busy, there's never any time. You, you sometimes watch couples in a restaurant, and they're, they're both texting, so why do they go out? Text. Maybe they're texting each other because they're not talking. I, 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 you know, they're just sitting there on their text. And the, the Ramchal says one of the solutions to, uh, to not having time is fixing time for Torah. Uh, and let's go, let's just expand the theme of Daf Yomi. The theme of Daf Yomi is about people learning every day uh, and having a time every day to learn. Uh, that, that learning, a, a student once wrote to me from university, I had no Rachman, and she said, I've got no time for learning, I'm so busy. And I wrote back and I said, oh, do you eat breakfast every day? <laughs> and she said, yes. I said, so you learn every day. I, I actually learn before I eat. Learning comes before eating. Uh, and about 30 years ago, I started, uh, I won't expand on it, I, start, I started learning Dafyomi 30 years ago. And... Um, I added to each day something else that I learned. Uh, and, and when I feel that I can do what I'm doing, I add something else on. I have a whole, my, that, that blue bag that I'm walking around with is just fine. Uh, and uh, I have a whole Seder Yom, which I learn every day. Doesn't matter when, in fact, I can tell my wife is so part of this that in the middle of having a baby once, she had a, a relief from contractions. She said, go, go and learn. Go and learn the stuff you've got to learn and then come back and you'll be calmer because you've got the learning done. Uh, and so, Dafyomi is, a, is an extension of that idea that a person has to learn it. Honestly, honestly, if you don't want to learn Gemara, learn something else. It doesn't matter as long as you, you stop during the day and you leave this world. You know, there used to be a play in England called uh, Stop the World, I Want to Get Off. Uh, and, and we need to, that's what Shul's meant to be. You know, you're meant to walk out of the world and into Shul. And, and leave the world and get realigned and, and in, into the right things that you're meant to do. But we don't. We, we bring, we're so idiotic. We bring our phones into shore. And when you ask people why, they say, oh, I need a siddha. There's a siddha. There's a siddha over there. You don't need your phones for a siddha because when you have your phone with a siddha, you have your WhatsApp notifications and Bibi's trying to get hold of you. Putin's trying to get hold of you. Everyone's trying. Very important people. We're all very important people with our phones. And, and we bring the world into shore, which is not the point. It doesn't have to do with this us at all. It's just not the point. The point is to take a break, to take a time out, to realign ourselves, to think. Just to stop and think, because the world is moving so fast that we don't have time to digest what's going on. You know, in the time that we've left Israel, we, we've been to war and finished a war. You know, and you're trying, to, you're trying to finish the war temporarily. We're trying to digest everything that's going on. Even if you're not from, yeah, stop, stop for a second, just think. Um, and I think that's what it means, you know, and, and for me, it's, I, I'm just a, a very, very, the, the only plus I think I have is I'm very disciplined. So if I decide I'm going to do something, it doesn't matter, I, I have to do it. And so my wife knows by now after 28 years, so there's a tiol, the tiol has to take into account that I have to learn either before we go, I know you're thinking now, never for wife. Yeah, she's a never. <laughs> she's never for many, many reasons that she's married to me. But bef before we go out, she has to. She has to make sure w either we come back early and I have time to learn, or we leave late and I have time to learn. But the learning is first. The learning has to be first. Um, uh, and without that, I, I lose everything. Uh, there has to be consistent learning, and the learning has nothing to do with the teaching. Jeremy once walked into my office. You know, 
he's not my boss, he's my partner, but he's in charge of the money, so... so and and he, made, he, 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 made, he made a comment to me when I... He, he, he made... He, he made a comment to me, I was learning, he said, what, what are you learning during work time? Uh, he was joking, whatever, but because, because I work during learning time as well, so I, I said to him, if I don't do this, I can't, I can't teach anyway. I'm not preparing shit, but if, I, if, I, if I'm not constantly learning and opening up avenues of thought and having time to think, I, I, can't, I can't, how can you teach for 30 years if, if you haven't got any new, new thoughts and new direction, you, you have to have it. We all need that. And I'm lucky, I work in Torah, people don't work in Torah, right? They need to stop. I saw something once in South Africa, phenomenal, it was when Rod Perez was in South Africa, they arranged me to go and speak in a bank, right? And, and, and I can't remember the name of the bank. Yeah, Investor. And they, had, they, they tuned in from Cape Town, right? And they were speaking from, I, I was in awe, right? People stopped in the middle of the day and they had a share. They had pat lunch, you know, they, they could have eaten other stuff in that bank, I think, but they, they had these rolls like we're having. Uh, it was, for me, it was phenomenal, you know, that you stop in the middle of the day and you put yourself somewhere. I, I want to finish with a sobering thought. The first time I came to this yeshiva, this was, uh, and is still next door, a medical school, right next door here. This was a medical school after the war. Th this yeshiva wasn't here. There were benches here, like in a university hall, the, the Ezra Nashim was there, but there was nothing up there. And there were all oh, just benches all the way right to the front, just benches here. Um, then it was taken over by a Jewish organization, and it was totally being run by a Jewish organization. And now it's a hotel, but part of the, uh, part of the agreement with the hotel is that this part of the yeshiva still stands. I, 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 I want to relate something to you, which I know, it's just a thought-provoking thought uh, and a conclusion. Uh, many years ago in yeshiva, so when we were in Kolo, a, a man from Hungary, an old friend of Rav Amital, came to speak. And Rav Amital was very mechubad to the man. And, and as the man was finishing, he was in Hungary, the man. Uh, and uh, he said, and Bezos Hashem, we're going to rebuild Hungary, and we're going to bring it back. And Rav Amital stopped him mid sentence and said, Adkan, Hungary's finished, it's over. We're not rebuilding Hungary, we're rebuilding Israel. They killed us here, and we're not, we're not rebuilding Hungary. And he stopped the Sikha. And I have mixed thoughts when I come here, you know. Ribbono Shalom, you need to invest in a... Every yeshiva in Israel is looking for money. Every institution in Israel, Rav Perez, everyone's looking to, to work with living souls. We need to invest in this. There are Jews here. Leave it for For the groups that come in here and give it to our Torah, we could have done it in the university room. And uh, I have very mixed thoughts about it. You know, it's nice, it's a nice place to come in. It's Mechabed Rav Meir Shapira, but you know, we've got, we've got shivas with people in them. We've got schools with people in them. There's no one here. There's no one here. It's a Chorban and it should remain a Chorban. Uh, it's open for discussion. But, but I want to finish with something Jeremy said yesterday. Remember Jeremy spoke by the stone of, uh, of Pietrikov about that uh, Hanania ben Teradion, I see, I see scrolls burning, but, but, but letters flying. So think about this as a sobering thought. Rabbi Shapira is famed for many things. He was a giant. He did two massive things. One was this building. The other was Dafyon. You tell me, where is this building and where is Dafyon? The building is nothing. And Dafyomi is growing and growing and growing. The scroll has been burnt. But the letters are just flying. And I, I think that's a, a sobering thought, right? The, the, the real, you know, there are many, many great people in the world who are raising money and building buildings. But Dafyomi is... You know, it, it's nothing. When I started doing Dafyomi 30 years ago, it, nothing compared to what, what people are doing today. It's all over the world, everywhere. And in answer to Darren Schottenstein, made it because of Dafyomi, because of the popularity of Dafyomi, and now they've made it bigger, and Stanz has made it bigger. In the old days, it was just Sonsino, so you needed to know Latin to know. Aramaic or Latin, or very, very good English. But, but the, the English was as hard as, as the Aramaic, and it's just getting bigger and bigger. What a, what a Yerusha.
So the building is a, a magnificent achievement. Tafioni said the Otiota Porcho. And then that, that for me, that's his eternity. That will always be Rav Meir Shapira. Every daf that everyone is learning in the world is Bishkut Rav Meir Shapira. And um, he must get such an achasar of that. Where the daf is being, I've seen me, I've been five o'clock in the morning in Woodmere. I've seen people doing daf yomi. Uh, people do it whenever they can do it, at the end of a day, in the middle of a day, on trains. Uh, I've, I have a cousin who listens to it on, on tape all day on, on, in his car. And when he gets home, he just goes through it just to. It's just phenomenal. You see the two things in how they burn the scrolls down here. They burnt the books here for 24 hours, the Germans. Yeah. Well, they do. They burn the books. Burn the books. Do what you want. Where are your books and where are our books? Our books are just growing and growing and growing. The Torah is growing. You can't burn the Torah. You can't burn the Torah. And... Uh, so I, 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 I'm in awe of the man, you know. I think anyone, as I'm sure someone in the position of uh, Rav, uh, Rav Perez and Jeremy, they're, they're in awe of such a man who goes around the world and gets the money for something like this in, in the 30s. Um, but but I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think it is uh, nothing compared to uh, that, that Yerusha of Torah and those Otiot that are porchot. It's, uh, for me, just uh, uh, mind-blowing. It's a sobering thought, I think. I, I, and I admit, not everyone will agree. Indeed, there's arguments both sides of why they should be here. And people come here, lots of irreligious schools come here and they stand here. And I've seen a man walk in with pretend sits it like strings and a wooden like a black hat and try to be a chassid. Last time I was here, he was kind of, I think, got a bit embarrassed. We were here to show us with the people here last week. We were dubbing mine outside. And he, he, he had one of these pretend talisim on. I thought, what are you doing? Well, well, we're not history. Oh, history. Look, I'm here. Here, my sister. I've got, I've got black lines to pull me. Whatever. So it has a value, obviously, but um, I don't know. I, it, it never, never had that uh, influence on me. The influence on me is uh, the greatness of this Yerusha that uh, Darren has shared with us. So, thank you. Great.